Yeah, them loud crickets getting louder and louder. What's up with that? Here we are again, ongoing, attempting to uh, bring some life back into a nation that was supposed to be kept different than the whole other part of the world, and that wasn't good enough for the world. They're coming to take it back. And so you can let that happen, or you can listen behind the woodshed and figure out where you can jump in to block your part out and shield that part that you're interested in from being taken down and taken over by essentially lunatics, brain-damaged people. And I really wonder, so what was I thinking the other day? Thinking all the way, seeing these um, what, the vaccine, mandatory vaccines everywhere, I, I'm really beginning to believe, and we read so much information about how these vaccines and the things that are in them and things that are happening beyond the blood-brain barrier are able to bring stuff into your brain through these inje direct injections. I'm just now beginning to believe uh, pretty strongly uh, that people who insist on mandatory vaccines are suffering from vaccine-induced brain injury and are mentally abused and therefore physically abuse others. So however we get at this thing, the world is going into this insanity that we're allowing. Don't ever forget that we are allowing what we see upon us. It's really fascinating to me how people will deny that in every way. They, you don't realize the double-edged sword that goes on. It's a dynamic world, give and take. That's not my rule. I wish it was. Uh, I wish I had a way to say it wasn't, you know, peace on earth and let's leave it that way. That You look around the world, it's just not that way. I don't care how peaceful you want to think it is and how uh, non-aggressive you want to be in the world. There's someone else that don't live, believe that. And so the real the actual dynamic is you're going to be set against at some time in the future. And I'm looking at this thing saying, wow, we're going to continue to let them build that so-called infrastructure and capacity building for them to do harm. Uh, are we going to watch them do that until they finally have the cage built completely around us so we can't file through any of it if, if that's what we want to do with the rest of our life? Or are we going to stop it right now? For those of you that will be on past cast, podcast, post cast, whatever the cast is, this will be BTWRLM313. For those of you that want to go get some of the links and dr use the, the links I use just to start us into the discussion on a certain subject matter, Get us into something that we can discuss uh, and follow through and back up and then keep moving. It's a faster way than, I, to my mind, uh, picking up these. What at least interests me on what I see that I use to show you how we would address a lot of these things. Not just talk about it, not just complain. Realize it's really there and there's a thing to do against it if you so choose and chose to do so. That was interesting, chose. I said that word chose. Forgot to talk to you all about that. Anyway, maybe someday in the future. The um, anyway, so we go. It's funny how my mind just kind of jumps around. It's very hard to keep it straight sometimes, but I do think I do pretty good. Hopefully, I don't know if you y'all listen to the coherent nature of the discussion as I go through. For as different as it seems to be, but inconsistent as it is, just using the so-called news that we're told to give us a heads up. Uh, also, before I go too far, just happened to notice in Minds.com, which I don't get too much action on Minds when they did that tokenizing. I became the token whatever, uh, non-token token. What, token non-token? Uh, what I didn't, because uh, I don't have a phone uh, to, to t register with their system. Every time they did a token thing, my, my, my views drop at Minds big time. So, But I, before, I, before that happened, I, uh, I want to do a shout out because I noticed I was doing more research on trying to figure out what did I say when and come across another website that I hadn't spoke about relative to, let's say, normalization of ignorance and or Sound Minds doing the rebroadcasts over at YouTube. Also, just in case, just in case, over at D-Program Network, it's d-program.org, www.d-program.org, putting up the broadcast for to be available to people on a web, another website. I appreciate all that. Uh, as I do all like the syndication that's going through ucy.tv, so we're live. We're the ghost in the machine, and uh, hope hope things are good with Jules. I keep my mind's thoughts of, are with her and, and her health and everything. Again, uh, the people that are the core of some of of our abilities to keep going out is uh, difficult to keep and and uh, always under threat. So, and with that, we have to, we have persistent and pervasive threats. I may use that as the title of the broadcast today, just to. It's an ongoing threat. If you don't step up and uh, stop it, it's going to be a fruition, and you're not going to like it. And it's going to be done. It's going to be accomplished by people that are mentally abused, mentally deranged, insane. And we don't. I can't believe how you can't. None of us can seemingly get together enough to stop this 
uh, this ongoing further abuse. Abusive child becomes an abusive uh, parent, so-called. And uh, here we have it. We have some people in society that they don't realize they're abused because of the very things that they promote. And they're trying to abuse you with that. Well, that becomes government. And then actually it's moving from government to governance. Remember? It's not really hanging in there. We, we lost government a long while ago. So, I, I mean, again, I look at people's comments and I just realize how how lack of comprehensive knowledge there is in a body of society when I see people making the wrong statement. We're not really dealing in a government the, anymore. It's been done. It's over and done with. We were supposed to keep that government that was supposed to be neutral to protect us. And that was wrested from us a long time ago. Doesn't mean we can't get back to it. And I look around, and what, did I, what have I told you I found? I found that there was a government that actually does seem, seem to fit the picture of a benevolent government. It happened to be property owners. It happened to be property owners that came together to protect themselves against intrusion, intruders, and keep peace amongst themselves. And so what am I talking about? I periodically mention them. I mention a lot about the law. It's that mining law that no one really thinks is, is relevant and or it thinks is obscure and doesn't affect them. But if you look inside there, that mining law says that Congress acknowledged mining, miners' governments. And go do some research on those governments. Were they all fangled, organized? No, they were pretty simple, but they were the basics of what a government was so that they kept the peace. They actually did what they were supposed to do. And so I have for myself, if, if nothing, if no one else, I have a model I can put my mind on because I don't know. I didn't make this place. I'm only living through it. But I have a model I can say what government really is, and it's of, by, and for the property owners in this regard. And we can extend that out to those that uh, uh, don't have property at some point because you all live on a property. As I try, I try to do that all for you, show you how your rights extend back into the land through your even your contracts for rent or for whatever. And we get to the land, law of the land, not that one that was sitting in the document in a par parchment that also had reservations. And it could be very well crown reservations and even worse down to back to the Vatican if you look deep enough. Am I saying that for today? No, I'm not going to go down that trail. That You have to do that so you see it. Because when you see this stuff, it, my opinion, there's nothing about an opinion I have. You will see it for yourself. Why I say get on the trail and go hunt it if that's important to you. But I'm not talking about the law of the land that uh, suffers dead in prior engagements but from before its existence. I'm talking about the land itself. And so in that comes people who have wanted to protect themselves and keep peace amongst themselves, and they created these governments. They were called miners, a real obscure to study, a study, and they made peace, and it was all not, it was all rules amongst how we get together and keep together, uh, and then the, how do we protect ourselves from others. And so that was the basic, there's a basic form of what government is. What we have today is governance. It's inside co corporate structuring. In fact, I keep telling you about how this works. Back in 1953, it appears openly about 26 states in the United States took on and changed, substituted the permanent laws of the people for a Model Business Corporation Act. 1953. That's before a lot of you have been alive. And certainly you'd be youngins but at that time. And so there was a big flip over right there of many, actually. And guess what? That flip over couldn't address the law of the land, the real land. And so I found a consistent thread I've been trying to focus everyone to look at. And let's start. And then so I looked at said so that's the narrow path that they're allowing, this one little thread that they can't touch that says so right in the documentation. And we move, start to move from there. We move in mass. Why I keep saying go back to the land. Where does your, where does your money come from? It came from miners in the land. It's property. It's not a fiat uh, uh, a creation of an, inst of an institution of an institution that was subverted. But if I've never said it like that for you to understand, that's why you go back to this, what we now call an alternative currency, which is really this silver and gold money. It's what men and women use when they come from the land. And if you're not, you're coming from legal. And then you wonder why you have so many troubles and problems, and you wonder why tax is theft. Well, it's no, it's extortion, and you've agreed to it. So it's not really theft, is it, actually? And again, the memification of the social networks is just is terrible. It trivializes certain things that really, boy, if I, people really understood what was going on, maybe, just maybe, they might get interested enough to do something, angered enough, or, or just resolved enough to do something. Do, folks, do. Trust 
I got a new tag going on with my Twitters. Trust is that truth is action. Truth is action. Talk is cheap. Truth is action. Make the switch, folks. Stop talking and start figuring out what you can do. I can tell you we need the help. Those of us I work with, boy, just it's an in fact, most of this last week, and again, I have to apologize to everyone, and there's quite a few now backing up emails. Just haven't been able to focus on that and make my email conversations back. Uh, I intended to do last week, but there's just too much coming at us. It's only a few of us doing it, and this other side does not stop, folks. They have all different ways of coming at us. And what's interesting is we're having to de- it's like we're a victim of our own success. They're having to focus on what we do to stop them. They're turning energy into what we have, what we've done in order to st- to stop what they've done, they've got to try and now persuade the larger population through deceptions. But we have, I under- we understand completely so that's how we can see they're coming. But they are coming to stop what we've we've interfered with their whole agenda. And it's just a couple of us that have been doing this. And that's what encourages me. If any of you just any, just keep st- just step up, find something. Get knowledgeable, understand you're working with the human element, understand you may have to convince a few people, you need to research and make intelligence on who would be the best to approach within the seat of power in the government and the local counties. As I get, like William Roberts would always tell you, and I concurred, you've got to work local. You come from the grassroots up, but you have to be knowledgeable, you have to understand the foibles of people, you have to, uh, maybe you are or aren't someone that can talk with other people. So I tend to overwhelm people, so I'm not the first guy, first line of defense. I've got a colleague who does that much better. So I can convey the ideas he needs. He then implements them. That's how we work. I can't do it directly for some reason. I just want people to know the knowledge is just too much for people. See, to me, I see it's an an there's an answer right there. We just have to start acting correctly, and we can use that law that was made by the functional government not the governance that we're, we're underneath. In other words, governance being that corporate overthrow by many things, by many ways, is what is being ruled, uh, ruling us, and we, we, didn't, we didn't understand that. And that's over and above that what I look and see happened after the Civil War. And I'm fascinated to watch now. It's coming back in the news regularly, referencing that Civil War as a demarcation. Just one sentence in these stories that I read, uh, and I won't read it. I don't know if I'm going to run across any today, but uh, they're there, folks. They're there to watch. They're, they're like another another propagandizing to everybody. One simple little sentence in a piece of, of of article, you pick that up in your eyes, it sits in your brain, and you think that's the way that's the way it all supposed to work. You don't realize the importance of what that notice was to you. So today we have this governance. It's this overthrow of your actual government. So what do I do? I don't really have a reference of what government what is, but I can... I can reference a mining district, and so what did we do? What I looked really deeply. I took a three-year study on this, folks. It's what didn't happen overnight, and I realized the power of one of those. And they were acknowledged by Congress. And I said, and they're not outlawed, and they're not. And they, I don't know if they can be actually. They're property owners that are doing their own thing. And that's totally separate from the government. But they were acknowledged by Congress. That's a big power. And so I got to give it. Let's look at these mining districts. These got miners' government. This is just people's governments, is what they were. You know, a special class of people, maybe, but they had land rights, and they were protected by that. And they are acknowledged by both Congress and the states to be separate from both, and they have to be. And so you start seeing what I've been telling you about the land. The law of the land is very powerful in this country. It excludes the interference by government. Now, you don't appreciate all that because we see so-called agencies running it all down, but as I've been able to point out to just about anybody who starts to look at the foundational law, you can cut through this nonsense. There is no jurisdiction and authority over this over these lands because why? You look for those of you that did the study or understand or heard this before, and those of you that you haven't but understand basic land law, they were conveyed and disposed by patent grants. If you look at the Constitution, those are those are letters patent. And underneath the grant law, the the grantor, which is the government itself, is a stop from returning to get that property that it granted. And the evidence of that is that patent. And it is it is evidence, ultimate evidence. It's not your land. It's not your possession. It's not the land itself. It's the evidence of your exclusive possession and use of that land to the to against all the world. As I, t- I even mentioned that last week as I said that. Now I remind myself. Forever. Against all the world forever. Why are we having such problems in this country called the United States of America that's supposed to be the difference in the whole world that is now allowing governance, not government, we live under governance, and everyone complains about government. It's really the height of ignorance, in, in my eyes, 
as I look around looking at very intelligent people, very good people that just want to make a memification of the world. For, for whatever reason, it's usually, it seems to be to just do a partial activity, a, a partial addressment, and just sit back and feel good that you at least understand it. Folks, that's not enough. I wish it was. I wish I don't have to tell you. I wish I wasn't even here talking like this stuff. But when I see people being destroyed and wrongfully, I don't even need the law to know that because moral, there's a moral thing. It's not in the legal. I don't, again, there's just something, I was just wired some way that that doesn't, doesn't work, and so I come forward to try and help. Whether or not I, I end up doing that is going to be the interesting uh, conclusion for what my time here on earth. But, uh, again, you got to listen and understand what I'm saying. And I'm kind of a little off the track, but I'm not. Getting us to land law, the actual law of the land, not the one that was uh, looks like it has what someone has described as the golden share, the reservation of power back in England, actually, and then in the Netherlands. If you look, go look at Article Six of the Constitution. For those of you that haven't heard me say this before, you haven't read it. Uh, your your law, your uh, treaties and uh, debts and engagements prior to that are law of the land as well. You have to go back and find all those, and there's tons and tons and tons of them. And you'll look very carefully, you'll see a, you know, what someone described as a golden share, that it was a reservation, and a reservation of authority. And that golden share goes in through, even Clint, I don't know if Clint Richardson even found this, it goes through why and how all your governmental stuff is inter interconnected with all, all the corporations. And there's all, seemingly, apparently, it looks to be uh, gover gold, these, uh, these reservations of power and jurisdiction in these uh, every establishment, which means if you pack, track it back, if there's a reservation of authority, like in your patents, everything that you have is expressed in it, nothing is implied, and it all has to be written down. When you see a reservation of power, you have to understand that's a title. That's a, an encumbrance on the title. If I see, but I take a land law and it says that subject to, that's an encumbrance on that on that enforcement against the world. It's a it's a reservation. Everything that's not reserved is to you exclusive. And so these miners got together with this exclusive power and said, well, we're going to protect ourselves and make our own government. And it's been acknowledged by Congress. This is a very high-powered thing. I don't do it to say, oh, look how powerful they are, because they are limited. And you have to understand that people seem to get all wild about a lot of this stuff. I'd, I've learned not to. They, they all have their, everything has its place. But it, within that place, you, you have absolute power within the regard of its subject matter. And so I brought to bear now, we get to bring things that I don't know if anybody ever heard before I started talking about it, relative to land law and all this stuff, was the, the trust obligations and the and the, uh, the the continuing trust going on with the public land and the public domain is different. And be careful that the trick term called public domain land, that's acquired land. It took me years to find that one. That was a tricky one. Public domain land is not public domain. I gotta get this. Is a, they do. They're very good at what they do. And so you're looking at a big thing that's a governance and not a government. So how are you supposed to comment against the government when you're only talking about the governance and don't know that? And this is my, what I've been trying to do for a decade now uh, to try and explain the distinction. It's so subtle. It's it's easy to be transparent against uh, to, to against you. And so let's get to that. The point of the corporations making law was the. But something in the books here, uh, the books, the uh, the the book of our history through the notice in the news, the notice that I called the that you call the news, I call notice. And a writer, it comes from all places. It's not necessarily authoritative. It's just people looking into it and seeing their thing. And I can take any a lot of the most anything and trying to show you that it's either on point or it's a little it's a little bit off point or it's an omission and it's not, it could be innocent. I don't really look at much in full judgment until I'm qualified the parties involved and what their intentions are. In fact, we got an issue that I've been working on, very difficult the problem is developing. Again, it's, it's, a, it's a, an effect of our own success. The, there's an amassing of some energy against what we've done to stop a real big encroachment in, well, in the Western, it'll be a Western states thing, ultimately, although we're working in a small area. The, uh, the one who's coming forth to be the, the face, the figure that's being promoted, could very well be completely ignorant and clueless that she's being a dupe for a bigger agenda. And so I, you have to be careful of that. Uh, uh, the, that the people that are doing this are good, could be good-natured and good-intentioned, but they don't understand the, the condition. And so you don't, again, I'm just saying, you don't become judgmental. You learn not to be, you try to be, not be judgmental. At some point now, you, you have to make a judgment, but you've qualified all the way down to the last little bit that they just won't, not only are they are they 
not going to be an ally. They're they're really set in being an enemy. Okay, so I mean, there's a, there's a lot of thought that goes on, a lot of energy that has to go on. It's not because you know this stuff; it's over. But if you don't start asserting this, these things I've been talking about behind the woodshed, then you won't. You, you're not on the path to get it fixed. And then I start wondering, why are you doing that? You become that one that I'm trying to judge, and not judge, convicted, if you will, of your own uh, uh, walking wood and your own victimization, because you just won't do anything. It's not enough that you know a thing generally. Right now, we're they're, they're specifically attacking us, so generalities aren't working here. And I can again guide you if you on the things I can. If you have an interest in those things, which I think is quite broad anymore. I can help guide you through um, a possibility to start addressing it. And it takes a little bit of work. I'm not going to deny that. And it takes, it's persistent. It's a, eternal vigilance was not a joke now that I'm in, into it and seeing it. See, that's the point about looking at a mining district, getting one started and, and being a part of it, and moving this thing through. It's a whole different perspective. I don't have the problem about a government. When I realize that it's un, of and for and by the people, is the is you inside that government doing things every time you get together and or contributing to it to do what? Simply protect yourself and work amongst yourselves in peace. When you're working together in peace on a common issue of protection, it seems to be knock down a lot of the animosities. It, it seems to focus your energy as well. And if you're not able to do that, we're, you're toast. I mean, anybody would be toast. If you get... You know, we get suffering this ADHD stuff. You're not going to be functional. As I said, again, like your mother and father who has a, a victimized son or daughter due to whatever, whatever pharmaceutical, you're focused on that on that offspring. You're not focused on your political rights or your property or anything else. And that's what the other part of the attack is. And so if you don't have a way to formalize and focus efficient energy, and this is a, the main thing I look at is how do we effect, efficiently move through a problem or around it or whatever to become, stay effective without overwhelming us. It's real easy to get overwhelmed. If you don't start to do this to see these problems again, it's going to be a failure. You're going to be overwhelmed and overtaken. Your feelings about uh, peace and the peacefulness and being peaceful and benevolent and, and whatever all I hear, this good, good words but no deeds, is not gonna gonna work. I can't remember the. I see. I don't even worry. I don't even put these things in my mind. I got to work hard to go track them down, and I'm not doing good good right now. I just said it before. Uh, the non-aggression principle. Yeah, that's a good psyop as well. That was a good psyop. Got a lot of people to buy into that, and then they attached it to a, this this memification thing that doesn't work. And so now, what do you do? Now I got to undo that problem, and people are resistant to it because it feels so good. And all the time you're focused on that, these people that are coming in, making these conditions against you that isn't really in government. And if you asserted real government, you could kill all of it. Again, the obligations and duties of government, not what it, what you've, what not what you've been feeling, because that's the oppression. We would really come forward a lot quicker. As I've told you, it's really easy. You don't make an argument with someone who's insane, and you don't argue with someone who doesn't have authority. You show them where they have none, and, they, and that pretty much ends the conversation pretty quickly. Now, again, as I reminded you last week, working with another miner gets a letter from the BLM. They want to come in and uh, work, do some project on his land. He came. He, he was the first miner I've ever worked with that said, but that number doesn't pertain to me. And I said, you got the trick. That's it. So we'll write a five five sentence letter and be done with it. Tell them that they don't have a right to. They have no authority and jurisdiction to put that on you. And now you set the record of their trespass. And I said, if you go like I said before, as soon as you do that, and it's a misinformation, and they are administratively bound to tell you the truth and disclose certain things, and they don't, that's mail fraud. How hard is this, folks, to get this thing straightened up? How many people are doing it? Sadly, very, very few. But let's get to this corporations writing stuff. And why is this even an issue? But how we can be dis we can be focused off of a point and not see a more, um, at least from my experience now. And I have to say, this is a very rarefied experience. Not many people do what I have done in this area uh, that I know of. I haven't run across many people that will. Uh, and this is uh, dealing with the state legislature and doing comments against legislation. Amen. Remember. Before our 2013 lawsuit, where we exposed the problem, one of these problems, a big, the major, most majorest one actually, the we were commenting. I was writing the paperwork for the mining district, which because the mining district 
exist as a foreign government to both state and federal, we were able to interject into the comments as an authority, not just as some public comment. And we, by that action, looking for a whole session, and I'll tell you, it was a lot of work. Looking at literally the complaint was thousands of bills going in. Yeah, the, that year I think it was around 2,600 bills. We had to filter through all of it to look at the ones that were attacking water rights, property rights, uh, mineral rights, whatever, whatever rights that were sitting there in the land. We were addressing that the that the, the Gamani district has cognizance over through what? That 1866 Act over land, over water, over grants, over patents, over what? what That's some other things in there I'm not remembering at this point. There's a, a big power sitting in there. And we were able to step in there and find, because of that, be able to address this on a different level. And with it, I can put I can put on a different mindset as well when I'm looking. That we found out how these people are doing this, this this thing that we sued to enjoin. Which, which I have to say, we're, another part of the work that we're doing in the last couple of weeks, we're having to address an enforcement for that injunction against the very same state that is just a recalcitrant criminal. And so we got to get that right. There's a notice. We're doing this a notice of the enforcement, uh, which we want to make sure we have right. So it's a lot of work to, to make sure all this stuff works out. But we're on the better side of this, aren't we? We're not underneath the thumb. We're actually becoming a thumb, if you will. But it's a thumb on, on the on the law to, to reassert the law that we went through 2013, the session before the lawsuit, and I could not believe what they were doing. It took a while to orient, be oriented to see, and it took a while of just filing these comments and watching the legislation come through to be aware of this, that this story I got today, and now we'll go to the tabs hopefully here, I won't, I'll get back to it. The uh, it, it tells us, and I get the concern that we're focused on one thing and there's others, and again, this is a, now learning about how our knowledge may not be as comprehensive enough, and so to some of us, those of you that think you know, or annoy the ones of us that do kind of thing, and I'm not saying I don't have my limits, but the point is, is that it kind of gets pretty pretty quickly to identify what's going on and who knows what and who doesn't in these very more uh, specific instances and cases. That This report here, you elected them to write new laws. They're letting corporations do it instead. That title is absolutely correct and true. What it doesn't say is when they go through and you read this story, you elected them to write new laws. They're letting corporations do it instead. It doesn't explain another way that this is happening against you. And if you don't understand this other way, and you just address it at the level of elected them, those so-called elected officials, and you address them, you'll miss the trick. Because it just doesn't come through the election of people that are then referring to their conflict of interest corporations or associations making laws that are submitted by the legislature. And this is what I want to point out today a little bit, and we'll move on. But uh, each year, state-led lawmakers across the United States introduce thousands of dream bills dreamed up and written by corporations, industry groups, and think tanks. Okay, so disguised as the work of lawmakers, these so-called model bills get copied in one state capital after another, quietly advancing the agenda of people who write them. I say that's all true, folks. But what's the lie in that? Well, did you hear it twice? I keep wanting to say something, but I wanted to read the first two paragraphs after I saw it. Did you did you hear the problem? These so-called lawmakers don't make law, do they? Everybody who has heard that knows exactly what the answer is. Before those of you that hurt, haven't heard, remember I said your your public uh, your states were overthrown by Model Business Corporation Act. Anything they do cannot be a law. All it can be is a corporate policy. And don't jump off the big, oh, I knew they were a corporation thing. That's just a small part of this whole thing. Just remember the probabilities and possibilities and the, and the context of the compilation of lists of things that you have to remember, that the, what you're dealing with, and then you use that. You don't, you don't get lost in the fact, oh, it's a corporation and give up. The fact that it's a corporation is your power. The fact that they can't make law is a power. But you have to come to terms with that and then deal with it. They don't make laws. So the story, even, I don't want to diss on, diss on the author, because I don't know anybody. They're USA Today. I don't know anything about these people. Yeah, they're probably media, ma mainstream media. Like, Grimmer, Grimmer calls it the clap. Yeah, that could be all that. But I want to point out, let's look through all that. These people may be writing with the, within their knowledge, and they're not, and I've said they're not wrong here. They're not wrong how this works. This, if you did a study on the Bar Association, if you look at New York, how the law moved from New York to the West Coast uh, is a fascinating study. Back in the 1800s. 
They did it by model legislation. This is not even new. So to focus in on this is really kind of a water under the bridge in a way. I felt a little more... Uh, dis I felt I needed to tell you about there's a third way that this stuff happens. And it really kind of does the same way, but it's in a different track. What I found out happened in 2013. And so it just doesn't come by these industry groups and think tanks. It also comes by the law schools and the university system. This is what we sued as well as we didn't sue the university system directly, but because of equity, Anybody who aids and abets the crime that we're stopping that causes harm, we get to stop. That's why equity is so powerful. We just have to identify, and this is what I was saying about the letter of enforcement, we have to identify the uh, connection to the case and the injunction. And so, there's a, again, it's a, asserting your rights and the remedies and then the enforcement parts. The enforcement's never guaranteed, and then when you find out about that, you realize how stupid the whole justice system is, notwithstanding all that. Going back to the model bills. Model bills have been around forever. They've been moved through by, if you do the study on the Bar Association, it's a fascinating study to see how law went west because of it and how they attempt to make all of the union, all the states in the union, to be one essential state. And, the, and each state has to take these model acts and adjust them. Like Louisiana is the worst one. It, it's like goes under Napoleonic law, and I don't know how much they've been moved past and into more of a common law setting. But that's been the worst one for uh, for this this modelization of the of laws to make them more consistent. And in some regard, that's cool. If we have a common understanding about the laws, we don't have to worry about, you know, having a gun right in one state and not in another, which is a whole other problem. But it kind of makes everything normal from state to state. On the other hand, having different ways that laws work is that other, that old union remnant that you could live in a union in a state that was different and more conducive to your life, to you, your, your thinking as a populace when it was a real government. And this is a shady part because it, that, that ended right after at the Civil War. I, I don't even know what to say more about that and no, understand what happened to the South. The South got, went through its restructuring by, the, by the, the, the district, which was a foreign occupation by the federal, the federal occupation. Louis, Louis, Louisiana sits right in there with a Napoleonic twist. And so model acts can't go through places like with, through Louisiana so, so easily. And you research all this, you start to understand a dynamic that's going on. Again, it's just a comprehensive knowledge that you start figuring out. And you look through just, I know that. You look, okay, how is that actually working as they move through time? Well, you're, ele you're elected to them to write new laws, and they're, they're letting corporations do it. And they restrict it to corporations, industry groups, and think tanks. They also do university system peoples, academics, and uh, law schools. And this is almost, I think it's, I almost think at this point, which I don't have no pr any proof of, it's, it's almost like a, a college course to learn how to write law, just shoot them into the legislature. But the point is that they have a pipeline. And this is where we atti attach the Democrats and the Republicans to be part of that pipeline, that they receive these bills. But the trick was, and it took me a little while to orient myself with this, is they don't come in as model bills like we used to think. They come in as what I, for lack of a better uh, phrase, they're more like a rector set legislation. They come in as pieces pieces and parts. In other words, if we were to look at Obamascare, it wouldn't come in as one big 2,000-page pack, package, although that was done that way so they could push the whole thing through. If they know that they're doing something incorrect relative to, as I would see it, land laws or the obligations of the state, the obligations that corporation now has to regard in the law, the de jure side, then they can't make it obvious what they're doing. And we I, it looked like a shotgun blast of stuff coming at us. And then eventually, after I was looking for three or four months of this stuff, being there to write a paper or comments against it, I realized it started to make sense. I started connecting the dots between all these disparate pieces of legislation, I, and it finally occurred to me, and why it ends up proving itself out when I finally come to the conclusion, almost maybe seven months in or something, I said, I told my colleagues, we're looking they haven't funded this whole thing. This thing's going to be one big bill. It's going to be spread out through the, through the uh, statutes with the revisor has the right to do, so you can't see it. That's why they did the revisions. You can't see that it's corporate pol by, by policy, uh, uh, po policy. And this thing needs to be funded that we've been tracking and commenting on. Hundreds of bills. We're coming through relative to land law and land use and all this interference with your property and taxation against it. And I said they haven't funded this whole thing. And, I said they haven't funded it because I think they know we're watching because we're commenting on it. It's the last thing they're going to push through, and it's going through in the last week. And do you know, folks, 
Three weeks later, that was the bill that came up. It was the bill to fund all this thing. And that was the lender, leverage funding that I told you about that triggered our ability to go to lawsuit. My point is, is that once I saw this, and, what, and you read this article, and you think corporations are doing this, and I could extend it, a university system, university to a, a corporation or legal entity. I can extend the law school to a, a, a legal entity. I can extend the bar association that already runs your state as a corporation under corporation law. That's why that's all the truth. But it doesn't come in that way when they are actually doing something against the law against you. They bring it in as what I call shotgun legislation. It's a rector set legislation. They pass it through. Everybody on the inside knows it's coming. It passes. You can almost watch the committees as they handle it. I started to watch all of this stuff, folks. This is amazing just to th see this organism working inside, the, your, your, inside this governance which is a government that was abandoned by you uh, and to enforce this thing. And I could watch this erector set legislation. All the pieces would come in. Each one looked unthreatening or, or pr pretty much so. It was unthreatening, unless it was like for us in specific matters. It was like 30 pieces of legislation that were absolutely violative that we had to address. And we did that to make a record of the violation. And as it was going on, I said, this is making a case for treason, guys. I mean... Uh, certainly destroying property rights. They don't have a right to do that, but this is a bigger problem. And we were also focused, I knew when I was looking for, by the end, I knew, I already had it in my mind, I was looking for that leverage funding stuff. And so there it popped up at the last, right at the last week, I think it was, and I said, here it is. We're going to court. And we're going to use this statute, not the violation of property. We're going to use this statute of funding this whole thing to get at them. Why? Why do we do that, folks? Because it also was clear to me that they were funding what? It's sustainable development, climate change stuff, right? So that's what was in the in the complaint for equity and stop uh, injunction. And that gets us where? What I've talked to you about, grant stream funding. What's important about that? That's the federal connection. Remember I talked to the EPA. It's the pillar of the UN Agenda 21, sustainable development. It's one of the pillars. That agency is one of the pillars. And they get their funding to do this against you through that avenue. We get to now go through anybody who aids and abets the treason, which is the grant stream funding that gets us to the federal. Isn't that interesting how powerful this becomes? Now, again, there's nobody that really understands what I'm talking about. No one that can embrace what I'm saying. And so there's just a few of us that understand this, have the record for it. And like I said, we're here after many years, after since 2013, to send a letter of enforcement after a bill, this HB 2020, that we heard happening in one of the states about the carbon, uh, the carbon, punitive carbon tax, to uh, send the message, to send the notice that they have to stop. Now, will they? No, because there's only a few of us, and the system is run by the bar systems. Bar, bar, the remedies are run by the bar bar members, and so we've got a little bit of a of a hitch in that giddy up. And really, all that is the number of people understanding what we're doing and then forcing the issue, understanding in law there's a treason going on, and that's a real big deal. Not just give it some word and say, oh, I said it and they're bad and that's it. No, this is a serious, serious, this is war crimes, folks. I mean, I don't know what to say. So we get all the way back to the federal, to the EPA. We hit the pillar. We take out one of the pillars of Agenda 21, sustainable development. Isn't that amazing? And all through this little, this little observation that it wasn't just think tanks and industry groups and corporations doing their special interest legislation, because that's all the government really is if you look at it. It wasn't supposed to be that way, but when it went to corporations, then they get to give themselves limited liability, and it's whoever steps forward. And this is another proof that you need to get active in, even inside this. That they, it's another proof that you have to be there to be uh, to to have your part stated and, and represented. So, it's what I want to point out: these model bills may not be so model anymore. They've learned something, and I think what they learned is that they're coming so contrary to law, actual law. But they, it was obvious, if you bring it in one bill, that they were violating everybody. So they couldn't do that. So what they do is they bring it through this shotgun or erector set legislation that's brought through the legislature. It's almost all passed. It's almost like a proofing of what would pass and not that kind of predispose the bill when it gets done. All that does pass is kind of predisposed to be agreeable without any severable parts, which each one has a severable clause separation clause, that when it gets put through the legislature and passed, there's just someone on the other end that collects it all up that was for that one bill, puts it together, and you don't know it's a model bill, but it becomes the model bill dispersed through the statutes. 
And so they get what they want is the point. So if you look at this story or you hear about it or you want to go model bills and that's our new focus, I wanted to tell you there's a danger in looking too focused and taking someone's lead. They may be really ignorant of a condition or they may be the purveyor of that of that uh, condition by focusing on a what what your mind would pick up as the, the target, the harm. So you focus on that and they come around in the back door. So this was an example of, the, of that. Yes, this is all true, what they say in this, uh, this thing. But to me, that's not what this, our lawsuit wasn't on special uh, corporations or industrial groups or think tanks. or It wasn't even against Grant Gang Green, the, the eco-terrorists. We, we didn't even sue them. In fact, that would be the worst thing to do, right? I mean, we'd have to then answer. They, they would answer because they're not smart enough not to. <laughs> And then we'd be what? We'd be facing the problem of walking up a against a bar member in a robe who's a group that he his membership agrees. And this is I can't see how it's any different than a bar association, uh, uh, the, the, a mining district in its in, in its uh, observations. Like a mining district protects property, they protect their own. And they're, but they're legal. See, the mining district and the miners and the land is in law. And that legal is not supposed to trespass. But that's the problem. They say, oh, we can't trespass it. Obviously. Remember that little designation we, the, the Bar Association, all its members support and promote a concept called sustainable development. They said where appropriate. It's where they get away with it, folks. And so you can let them get away with it. And the point is on this here, they are, yeah, these corporations, industrial groups, and think tanks, and this has a special bend that it goes to. You start focusing on, on certain people that are getting advantage and special interest. You focus on all that, and you forget but that may not be the only way that laws get into legislation. And they're not laws. They're all policy. You miss all this when they, you listen to this article. Again, uh, U.S. Day Today did an investigation, they claim. So now let's put it to another point. Even if you didn't know what I just told you about the, the rector set legislation, they've just agreed that's the way the laws in your states were, are make, made and created. Are you okay with that? Do you care? Maybe you don't care, but that's why is your what's your complaint when they start coming to take your red red flag gun and to make raise your property taxes or make it so you you can't chew gum between A A Street and D Street in every state or you need to hold your breath at some place or you need to pay a tax because you didn't hold your breath and that it, it, hellfire is up there what, listening through your phone if you didn't. I mean, come on. When do you what when do you stop complaining and start saying that's enough? I've had it. And here we have a direct path on how this is being done. This is evidence in the notice to you. That's the USA Today get the notice that there is this path that I'm exposing to you. There's the way it's actually done. And you can focus on one or you can just sit back and say, oh, there's all of it. And it's all no good. Okay? So and so I just showed you here, if I hope, that you've got to be careful about being led by the nose, even on things that are true, but they're not complete. The whole truth and the truth and the whole truth, right? Remember, that's what they kind of say. Yeah, what's the whole truth? That, that can be hard to figure out, especially if you're not engaged. If you're not engaged, I would have never ever seen this if I hadn't been um, by our intention through the district to protect production and property rights and land and the state's encroachment on all that. I would have never seen how that works ever. And, and so you have again, as I tell you before. You have to be in it to see some of this stuff. I can't even explain. I just explained the mechanics of this, but you you can't you can't appreciate wh that you're seeing some of this unless you're in there seeing it. You can't have your head stuck in the acme uh, behind the woodshed acme bucket of sand. You can't do it that way. You can't do it on a keyboard. You can't do it arguing with people. You can't do, do it thinking you're real smart. Uh, it, it, you know, smarter than the next guy in the chat. I mean, it's just not it's not going to cut it. In the emails, in your Facebooks, in the memification of the social networks. It's not going to happen. Every time I see one, oh, in some regard I can tell you, a little bit of my heart goes sad. Because everyone that went there and not where it should have been is another moment that these people that are invading your lands and making you complain on the wrong things are getting away with it. And so I could read all this stuff. It's amazing. They go through lots of facts here. It's really kind of an interesting story. There was a one like this one thing. USA Today and the Republic, I guess another publication, found found at least 10,000 bills almost entirely copied from model legislation were introduced nationwide in the past eight years, and more than 2,100 of those bills were signed into law. 
That's the model bills, folks. I can't tell you how many bills went through, go through that are this erector set law that are model bills that are broken up and passed through the the membrane of the system. And the people in the system, your representatives that they taught you, you you vote in, not all of them, but most of the ones that have any tenure are there to receive that bill that's the that's a, a broken up piece of legislation that someone in the back, when they start to enforce it, will be put back together. And as I say that, thinking about this legislation, the leverage funding and all of that we went through, I wanted to make this comment that I'd never said, I don't think I've ever said it before, but uh, one of the problems I noticed with this, it is totally some, it's inside this sustainable development, the problem, uh, sustainable debt thing, but I've never mentioned it because I never thought about it this way, but it occurred to me this basic, uh, be careful again, another reason to be careful of basic income or, you know, paid income for, uh, for, um, through these processes to give you an income when it's going all south and you get what they call adequate and who determines adequate. But it, it, it also made a differentiation for who would receive it and it was to those that made socio, socially meaningful input work. Well, that just occurred to me. That's no different than leverage, leverage funding to special interest in these legislations. This basic income appears to me now that I just looked at it this way. It just occurs to me, just a flash of thought, uh, inspiration, I guess, that they're basically making in legislation a transfer of wealth to the system of partially of which is basic funding to people that they deem socially relevant and that essentially would be paying all the volunteers that the special interest legislation enforces for their work instead of being volunteers now and then that adequate socially relevant thing is determined by a third party which is the same people that took you down so if I, put, I throw this out maybe as a side. The basic income guarantee appears to be an adequate payment for those doing socially relevant work, which is to promote this takedown, and you pay for it, those of you that are being taken down. And so, again, you got to look kind of, got to step back. It takes a little bit to figure this stuff out. I, uh, I just wanted to say that it became important in my mind. Uh, that's why they want basic income is what leverage funding did. It funds these people to come and attack you. It funds the programs that, that come to attack you, and you're eventually paying it uh, locally out of your property taxes or, or other taxes or taxes imposed, like the carbon punitive carbon tax. Like they're going to be paying this basic income becomes now a license to pay the volunteers to come and harm you. They're minions to come and harm you where they didn't get paid before. Your socially relevant conversations n not going to be paid. I can guarantee you that. You're going to be wa you're watching the mechanism of that on the social network and all the so-called so -called censorship. This is just another plan. So, okay, spent a lot of time on this. Be careful not to be lulled into being focused on special interest industry corporation. Uh, remember, the Bar Association is a big corporation. They're the one implementing this. Why aren't you attacking that? If you're going to attack it based on the model bills, attack the Bar Association. But I'm kind of pointing out to you here, not kind of, I just did point out to you, this legislation that's really doing the harm is actually coming transparent to everybody. It's invisible to everybody. It comes in pieces, and it's assembled inside the system to then become it's not really a model act because it's whatever it filters through, they keep. Whatever it doesn't filter through, they can't use. But it does form the basis of the authority, authority in this case, because it's all policy, not in law. And it subverts law and land, pol land uh, rights and all this and destroys obligations and duties of the de sure state. This comes in and gets formed back up and erected, to put together so that it becomes a force and effect and no one sees it happening. So... Be careful not to have your mind guided to, to you see this stuff. Uh, and it, this is just on this thing. I see lots of information that comes in. It points to say this is the problem, and then they're not telling you that there's a lot of other possibilities going on, likely other things I actually know are going on that you don't even have a clue on. And if you focus on that and you think that's the bait, you bite that hook, they got you. Next thing you know, on that, they'll be yanking you out of the water and clubbing you in the head with that, with your with your, you know, your intention to go take that bait. I'd say step back and there's other things going on. So where these guys were right, they're not telling you the whole truth. And the whole truth is needing to be understood. Because if any of you ever enter into this issue where you're trying to stop a wrong, you'll have to understand this dynamic on how this works. Because you'll end up taking, as we do, you'll talk to a local policymaker. They, everybody just makes, makes policy anymore. But they have a seated decision to make a difference local to you. 
they have to be understanding this dynamic eventually. You have to tease that, you know, slowly educate them on this. So that they under, because if you don't understand it, you don't understand how to use the local power in order to avoid that constraint. I just said some kind of technical things. Maybe in my mind it's, it's a lot more action, but the point is if you don't have this understanding, you're focusing the attention of someone who has the right to, the power to make a decision in the wrong way that's, it's not wrong. It, it could be right for that, but it's being uh, eroded by another mechanism. And so it's important to really understand. When I say learn the battlefield, that may be your steepest learning curve, actually. Because the laws are pretty straightforward. You can read all the, all the policies that you'd read are pretty straightforward. The caveat about the policy is it doesn't, it doesn't overwhelm, it can't over, um, it can't overwhelm the law. The law sits there, and that's why I say the property law is most important. In other words, let's put it back to the patent quickly. Why would there be in the policy of the corporation of overthrow a statute that says their courts cannot touch a grant of evidence, uh, grant of patent from the United States? If that corporation was all powerful and could change all things. That is evidence that the de, de facto corporate standard cannot overthrow law. And so we have a little evidence. If it's the only piece you ever get, you have a little evidence that not all things can be overthrown. And that gets me back, just as I said before, you're back to international law considerations. And so you can pull this thing together more and more for all y'all. And so I, that's what I wanted to say. It's a rector set legislation. Be careful. These model bills are coming through as uh, parts and pieces. It's like they, they throw poo at the wall and see what sticks, actually. But they get a high percentage of sticking because they put it through in pieces and nobody actually notices that it may be harmful. In fact, each little piece might actually look beneficial. But when they, the synergism, the synergism of those coming together and being put together is a, ends up being a destruction. And no, and let me remind you. In other words, after many months of fi fighting comments, I was looking for the last piece of, of, of what became one big legislation in parts. It was the funding of it all. And it came, folks. I mean, how much more science, how much have I proved the theory and the science and the thesis to become the, the, the nature that I'm observing than to predict the future and have it come out? And then upon which we would act. And in a critical, in a very critical point, in other words, follow the money, right? I mean, how much per, more perfect was that to see? And what does that thread do? It gets us all the way from state to federal. So it tells you, your, your, these, these acts are also not, I'll remind that, this part of making a, um, I'll extend the, the point of this. It means that your, your, these shotgun legislations have come from a place and they're learning how to do this from a place that they intend you harm and it's federal. And then, because of the nature of the egg organizations that they're doing it and the funding sources like the EPA, it's one of the pillars of the thing that everyone denies is going on or sustainable development or well, another word the Bar Association will admit is Agenda 21. And so, if you again, we're in a different, slightly different day. Uh, I appreciated this story from the USA Today, but uh, they're only telling it, focusing us on the old method. And I think this is implied to go after those three or four groups that they're talking about. And you forget your university systems or the bar association is one of those. And that the model legislation came out of the bar to make everything uniform. Well, what does that do? That federalizes everything, doesn't it? So you don't even realize that you're being federalized as well. Well, the other problem is, is that it's internationalizing it as well, isn't it? Because it's all under the same standards. And it brings the law over time. The laws they can change, they change. And over time, they get this uniformity happening. And you are defeated by that incremental, transparent attack. So, these are, keep it up. Keep being crickets, and you might be food sometime. No, food for a fish. If the guy's there to feed you, and this is an interesting little story, not necessarily maybe a, a discussion about it. I don't, you know, I'm kind of, I like I like animals, so I take care of them best I can, uh, or not have them, so I don't you know don't put myself underneath the obligations uh, for the most part either. A man accused of abandoning pet fish faces animal cruelty charges. Man accused of abandoning a pet fish faces animal cruelty charges. Now I don't know where the animals get their rights, but this is where do-gooders came in and did this. And I don't you know I don't want to I'm not uh, not uh, being this is not right, but when you find out the fish was not very well taken care of. And he, he then gets taken care of by someone that cares and, and actually has a value more than what was started. And they all, and this whole thing you see was based in value. 
I don't know what the real harm was. The, the fish, maybe people should have been made available to this guy who couldn't take care of the fish earlier on before his, his, his landlord threw him out. I, I don't know what the answer, maybe the guy was incapable of having an, an animal. Uh, there's lots of people like that, can't even keep care of themselves. I mean, I'm talking to a bunch of people in this broadcast. What, where are you in the continuum of not caring, not taking care of what you ought to? It is uh, immense. It's an immense uh, thing that I look at this story. Man accused of abandoning a pet fish faces animal cruelty charges, and then I just look, a, let's step back from that, whatever I might think about it. Whatever I might think about that and what, what that's saying. My, my view, my, Immediate response was, and I put this in the Twitter, even if I were to agree the baby of a man and a woman is an animal. Because we're talking about animal cruelty. Remember, human is an animal. Even if I were to agree that a baby of a man and woman is an animal, this animal cruelty accusation is in a country which authorizes partial birth and water bag, quote, abortions? And for commercial profit? Are you are you are you kidding me, folks? That stopped all making sense fast for me. And then I looked at the commercial profit thing. Basic, you know, we see the legislation in Roe versus Wade. And I keep talking about all this stuff fills right into all this. The fish they say in the article was worth fifty or something bucks. They got it for free to take care of. Well, they had a, a parasite to deal with. But the fish was worth 50 bucks that they got given to them to rescue. It's sad that it was in that shape, but it, it turns out okay. Why is the guy going to face a $4,000 fine in a country that allows partial birth water bag abortions for profit? In other words, you preserve the so-called aborted fetus. It's born into a water bag just so you can use its living cells. And we're going to go after a guy for $4,000 for, for not caring for a fish that he couldn't keep because his landlord threw him in the street. And then the state takes theirs for $4,000. Who made that law that you didn't stay? Wait a minute, that's not making sense. Or now that you see it, you can say that doesn't make any sense. It's become consistent at least, even underneath our policies. How about that? And who's going to say that? Again, are you going to be the, the only teacher that says, stop shooting me with that with that gun to to train me to go attack the attacker of a school because... You want me to be the first line of defense without giving me a weapon to defend myself? So you shoot me, teach me how to how to act, how to behave? Who, who's going to be the first teacher out on this one? Wait a minute now. When does the fish have more rights at all? And this is where, if you forget this point, this is where rivers are getting rights that they don't have right to because what they've done is they've forgot the law of the land and the law of proper watershed management they've been imposing. No different than in Venezuela. They cause your financial harm. They cause your forest to burn and then they blame you. And you're going to have to live with it. It's the same old thing. So, is this law that says that you can be fine for not taking care of your fish in a country that allows water bag abortions, in quotes, water bag abortions for commercial profit. It is a sickness in this country. I can't even, let's move on. U.S. government refusal to confirm or deny it put American journalists on a drone kill list calling chilling. Here's another one of those stories that were so far behind, so late in the game. It's supposed to be news, and they say this, so now it looks like someone's seen it. Uh, but I asked, uh, and this came through again, the Twitter feed, uh, this isn't news. Let's read that again. U.S. government refusal, government's refusal to confirm or deny it put American journalists on drone kill list called chilling. When did I call it chilling, folks? You want to talk about how long ago this was. But why I went to crickets? Can you, like, recite after me? And I say, this isn't news. Where was everyone in 2010 when the United States government made every American and anyone in the world subject to a kill list by executive expedience explained in the murder memo? 2010 is a long time to be crickets if a republic was to be kept or lost. What's the complaint now? And so I'd get real short on looking at this. Everyone wants to make news out of stuff that happened years ago. You look at this and it's all, we're going to focus in on the journalists. And we realize that they were just focused on, we, we were put focused on one thing when we're actually missing everybody, every other fish in that barrel. 
like journalists are now taking a space in our mind about needing to be more protected. And guess what? For the most part, it's all the nonsense propaganda uh, tale tell tellers, the myth tellers, the, the, the lie tellers. And we're setting up a mindset of protecting only journalists when everyone underneath the murder memo is subject to executive expedience and that kill list. So to me, this is almost like an insult that people are coming so late and just going to call up a focus on one. Remember, like we called model acts. No, I'm saying, listen, there's a shotgun erector set legislation that goes on. You better not, you better not focus on just those groups over there because it's really what's killing you is this thing over here. Same thing here. You focus on journalists, you miss out that you're the actual target. Where was everybody, folks? I'm still waiting. I'm still crickets. Really, folks, it'll be the day when I can stop playing those crickets to you. I really, really, really will. But I, I don't see it. You can change my mind, folks, but I don't see it. I don't see it. And I guess I'm, I'm hopeful because I see how fast a few people can do some things and at least forestall the attack. You know, again, it's an, it's an invasion. So they're not stopping. They've got plenty of money. They've got plenty of backing, plenty of info. They call it capacity and infrastructure and co uh, plenty of ability to build more. And so there's just a couple of us holding the wall. Uh, we're all waiting for the rest of you. And it, if we can, just a couple can hold the wall, what can we do to turn it, stop it and turn it around? It's, it's just a, enough people to show that we're not going to, literally not going to take it anymore. And we're not going to stand by silent while, while this takeover happens. Now, one of the things that comes up in the exaltation, the pedestal building that goes on, was something that's come up in the news that I ta called out. Partly I don't have the proof because I'm not involved with this and I don't get involved in it. But there's certain things you can look into a situation and start finding problems. And then, as I said last, I said this at the beginning of this uh, this art, uh, broadcast and last week, you've got to refine your actions and your attention. Yeah, you keep track of things, but you don't get buried in it. You don't get lost in all this stuff. You, you don't you don't envelop yourself in in the cause of something that you really have nothing to do with. But you need to take notice of it because it may tell you something. Well, very interestingly, and in, and in to exalt journalism at the expense of everybody else who also is on that kill list by executive expedience. Remember, the murder memo explains that they throw out the judiciary for even as bad as it is. They throw it out completely. They throw out Libra code. It says that expressly. It's not me making this stuff up. And they're throwing out other international law, which I told you this is now a declaration of war on the world. I told you all this way back when, what, in 2012, when I finally felt... Enough that I wanted to tell you there was enough proof that it couldn't be refuted or argued or anything. I don't like getting into all that nonsense. I have to just wait sometimes until it's just clear. It's clear that we can't go to any other. There's no other option that this could be. And so, since then, no, nothing. I said, it's all destroyed. You're, if you look inside what they did, what the executive did in this country, no different than maybe what Lincoln did, but in a more perverse way, in a way, uh, the declaration on the whole war, not just the United States, was to destroy actually the establishment when it won't regard the judicial branch, which has a co-equal power, and it won't regard the law, which has a co-equal power. You're dealing with a dictator or a despot with, with bad intentions when the word kill comes right after that on executive bureaucratic expedience. And so your, your nation was destroyed there again in a new way. You no know, crickets. And so I'm wondering, well, where is everybody with all your complaints? Where is everybody? And that, that doesn't even that doesn't even address this thing I'm talking about we did in, and in, in seeing what happened in 2013 and the implementation of a foreign rule and understand that that foreign rule, Agenda 21, is not law. It's not international law. So, I don't know what to say of this, but journalism, journalists are being raised up right now. I find it interesting. Uh, being de They're kind of giving out their point, even though for the last few years we've now recognized it's all fraud, it seems. Almost all of it. Even in the alternative. And even to the extent, if you look very carefully, it's just People who have a feeling and a sense and complain and think that they're seeing the thing, and as I come tell you every week to show you, well, that may be true what they're seeing, but it's not the thing. It is a thing. It may be the truth, but it's not relevant, actually, to the underlying causes. Stop looking at the effects. That we see this story come out, and something I told you I was really uncomfortable with, and I called it out the first, I think it was within the first broadcast, uh, this thing about a journalist who was supposed to be inside the system that brings out information and uh, get, escapes away into Russia, this guy called Snowden, which I looked at the whole condition, and then he hands this, mach this information over to, uh, what, Omidyar and uh, Intercept and Greenwald, and I said, there's something fishy about this, and they were going to take then take and give it 
disinformation piecemeal. There was big arguments over why they were doing that. Well, here's this snow job, folks. I tell you, snow job Snowden. Closure of Snowden files underscores the people don't have free access. Do I need to really read more? I guess I could set it up on Wednesday. First, look, the Intercept's parent company announced it was closing access to whistleblower Edward Snowden's trove of leaked files, saying that other major new out news outlets had ceased reporting on it years ago. The reason. Experts told Sputnik that the view files, for, here's the report to you about this, the foreign, if you will. Sputnik, the, the guy, where that where no job is, is, is living, files should never have been kept private in the first place and shouldn't remain so now. Remember now, he says they're going to close access to the ones that are available. There was tons that were not available. They were going to be the gatekeeper for. They're closing down the access. So as regarding my prior discussion here about focusing on exalting journalism, this is what journalism is doing. It's a big setup, a setup for a takedown. You buy into all this stuff, you put too much time and energy into it. Uh, yes, there's truths that come out of it. Yes, we got to know there was big, serious things that were fact, not opinion. We now we know this stuff is derogatory, but so I told you also be careful that when you get something in knowledge and you won't act against it, it's still working and you're not. It works against you. The very thing you now know, and we got back to the silent. Your silence is consent, don't we? And they work on that. We got that's not my rule. It's just how this thing works. So you can stay crickets and argue with me. You argue with yourself. It doesn't matter. You can do little snippets, you know, snippy words against me. It doesn't matter. I look at this and say you're you're just not going to help. You're probably not really aware for as intelligent as you might think. As I told you, oh, yeah, we can look at all the model legislation. Lots of people know about that. But did you know about the, the shotgun thing? Have you experienced it? Would you have known how to take that to task? And my question then, we did, I thought, a fairly good job back in 2013. But I still have the question, could we have done even more? There's always this next thing. This is a big deal. And most of all y'all are crickets. In 2010, when they said they could murder you, you were crickets. And now someone comes up and says, oh, well, they can do that to journalists. Who cares? They do it to everybody. And then we find out these guys, this journalist, it's not someone really, maybe, well, I won't say it. This is not such a good deal to exalt journalists over yourself. Get lost in the snow job. This is a blizzard. Oh, the, you know, April showers bring May flowers. Well, we get snows in April, too. Here it is. I would have almost loved to see this come out on April 1st. That would have been actually another twist to this whole thing. Anyway, it didn't. Intercept shuts down access to snow jo uh, Snowden, snow job trove, but actually it was just what they allowed. They had a whole lot more, and they admitted to it. They weren't going to give it out piecemeal. And so we, we again, be careful on what we focus on. This, this really takes a long time to get the mind to, to back off a bit and, and not be so knowledgeable, if you will, but be knowledgeable. You have to really be having your opinion, you don't have an opinion, you have a knowledge that you're working with, and then you work, well, you have a knowledge, and then you work with it. Like I said, what would you do? You're faced with a shotgun legislation coming. I mean, it just felt like I couldn't even know how, I don't even know how I kept up with the commenting on it, but you just do, I suppose, you just do. And then that starts, being in that stream, you, that, being in, under the under the gun, if you will, watching this thing actually being able to be by, uh, assembled to to people's destruction, and they don't even know that's what's going on. Watching the support for journalists, which is important to support, except look what journalism has become, the press, if you will. In the United States, I'm responding through the United States of America, the idea of the press has this absolute power. And I keep showing you that, well, if you're not the press, then does that, that they kind of imply that you don't have any power if you don't claim to be the press. And then so I hear people get upset because uh, someone like Vin E. will get a press pass and think that that's a, some kind of a fraud. No, that's a necessity, and it's right. But why do you have to do that should be the thing you're looking at. It's the problem. That's the corruption under the transparent corruption to this whole thing. And who allowed that to be brought on and who continues that nonsense? That, that we exalt these people that are actually people that are setting up our mind for a takedown. Yes, there's truth that we learn, but it's not the truth of the condition that we're trying to, that, we're, that we just get slapped in the face and the chops if, if we're not killed by it. And so, so, back to, you know, I haven't been really more energy than to say it looks like a snow job to me. It looks pretty much like that's worked its way off on such the lamest reason that other 
other people, other news outlets don't want to report on it, or they're feeling they're feeling dejected and slighted or something. They thought they were going to have this this information that they could uh, look look at look at the psychopathy here, or the the the, the mentality here, or the the insanity here. If I have a little bit of information, I can feed it to you a little bit at a time, and you'll agree, and you'll need me forever. A bunch of mental cases, it seems to me. And so at the time I was, I called a snow job Snowden. I said, just release the information, let it be what it is. Well, now you find out they didn't even release all the information, and they're going to close that access, and you didn't get the rest of it. That's your journalism. That the prior stories all worried that those people are going to be uh, put on a kill list. That you, they didn't misfocus you on the find out. Remember, you're all on a kill list. What's the murder memo? Well, I don't know. Go check back through the access, through the Real Liberty Media archives. I think I put a link to it. I, I don't remember now. Like I said, I got to go search my own stuff a lot of times. It, it's a continuum of, of streaming information to you behind the woodshed. Uh, you got to keep up. And thank you to a lot of you that cite, uh, write to me that tell me that you're doing that. Uh, I appreciate the dedication. I'm uh, humbled by the fact you want to listen to me, but you know I'm here too for a, a reason, and I hope you pick up on these things that I think, I think, at least as I think about them through the week, what do I tell people on the weekend, is uh, very important uh, things to understand, the foundations of understanding that you need to know, and way beyond what you think, uh, or what you're told, what I see in the, in the social spheres, and the, 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 the hives of constitutionalists, or patriots, or progressives. See, even progressives are being destroyed. They're all duped. They're all duped. And, I, and not to say that these people were duped. They were caused. Remember I talked to you about, we were, um, I was involved in a town hall meeting. My colleague the of the mining chairman was on one end, and I was on the other of this line of, of, of agency people, government agency people between us, like a bookends, and uh, dealing with uh, people who were in the, pro, in, the, in the audience that didn't like mining, the mining law. They were against the mining law. By the end of that discussion, I explained to them that, they, and they were progressive, liberal, so-called liberal-style type minds. I explained to them, we're talking property rights. We're talking that the law is there to, if you feel you're being slighted by a miner due to water pollution, you have a remedy. You, did you exercise that? And if you didn't, and you want to get rid of this law, do you realize that your underpinnings of that law also are in how you even own your land? In fact, it was probably by nature, because it's a land of minerals there, uh, said so you're likely your your underpinnings, your patent is probably so, a part of that law. You you destroy this mining law, you destroy your own property rights. Now, I'm not talking hyperbole here, folks. I'm telling everybody the truth straight up, I'm not trying to do anything off. I, did you, you know, she didn't even have a clue about that. You know that that next, day, that next day her husband tore down their website and rebuilt it to understand what property rights was. They realized that in ignorance, even though it's good nature, and yes, they don't want to have, they think a miner was doing the poisoning of arsenic. No, I said, you, what area do you live in? She told me, I said, that's a known for arsenic in the rocks. The miner's not doing it. The miner happens to be following up the trail where the arsenic's coming out because that's where the mineralization is. He's not causing it. It was coming out before. You just didn't notice it because the miner didn't point you to it. But if it's not, if he's doing it, yeah, I say you need to you need to sue that. He can't pollute that that water. But you're going to have to. Can you prove that he's doing it and not nature? The point is, you have property rights, and you you need to go through that that avenue. Don't destroy the a law that. Don't try to go against the law that gives you those rights. And so this new awareness comes, and people learn better. They do better, actually. And so again, as we understand better what's going on how these things are, are being worked against us, how we be literally led by the nose, and on important things. I, I, certainly water pollution is not something I want people's family to, to endure if they know someone's actually doing it. But now we don't make up stuff either, and don't go making, destroying, an inf d destroying a foundation of government and a foundation of existence in a society that's different than any other country just because you have a complaint that, really in ignorance that you didn't know was the truth, which would have been, the, no, the rocks are creating that. The bacteria in the rocks make water acid, not not the miner. But underpinning that, you're using that as an excuse to cut your own throat, destroy your own mining, uh, your property law, which the mining law if evidences is a fact, and a, a continuing one at that. So, so here we exalt the wrong thing. We get involved in something that we think is important. It's important to keep good journalists out there. 
we can't stop the bad ones. That's you know, like we talked about. They all have the right to speak too, right? But then they focus in on press, and then we exalt the snow job. And we exalt those that would perpetrate that as well as another thing. For as truthful as th there may be writings that come from these areas, again, like I was talking, one of our dangers here that we're working with, somebody who's popped up, again, it's, we're a victim of our own success. I said, be careful, this one that the, that's being supported, that's getting airtime, they could be telling 99% the truth. And if the foundation that she is speaking upon is a lie or an improper authority, the whole thing fails. It all dies. That people would support her in a hundred percent, a ninety-nine percent the truth, and then hand that authority to some somebody who they now people think is on the ball because ninety-nine percent of the truth is told, but the one percent link is to a fallen condition. The whole thing fails. Is our danger, and that's what they've come and brought to bear. It looks like a, someone's promoting something that you can't find hardly any error, and the only thing I can focus in is. Who is she connected to that's actually running the show behind the scenes that they're going to walk this thing through to make the final decision on is the enemy. And they again, they get you to buy into the deception. They tell you a bunch of truth. In fact, the hook is the little thread of deception that you don't understand, the condition that actually, the, the one that's holding the flag and you get focused on the flag. Oh yeah, it waves high and bright, but you don't realize the one that's wielding that is a, a corruption or an enemy in the gates. And so this is what seems to be going on. The, again, this is a continuing, is a persistent, pervasive threat, as I said, maybe the title of this broadcast. A pervasive threat now comes and develops in space. Space wars, India's successful tests, anti-satellite, anti-satellite satellite. Uh, they were successfully being able to launch a satellite that destroyed another satellite. That caused a bunch of, not, a bunch of debris in space. That wasn't true, too cool. And NASA comes out to to, to claim that that was an irresponsible test. didn't matter the United States has blown, nu blown nuclear devices up in the atmosphere forever and does its own destructions and things like that, tracking on thousands and thousands of, de of debris particles. No one makes a satellite to go and collect it all up, however that might work, however all we smart we is. Uh, but India has now made a satellite to take out another satellite. NASA got all over the fact of its destruction of another satellite and the debris, and then Pentagon pops up and warns India against messy tests in space, despite doing similar one in 2008 was another story I picked up. And then I was wondering, why is Pentagon even talking about it, with, since they do in fact make all this? And this is again pointing to other problems. They point you on one problem and they try to vilify somebody, and yeah, maybe that's the, the pollution's not good in space, yeah, we don't want it to threaten ISS or whatever, but what, are the, what is someone covering? They point you in a direction, but you don't look at them any further. You don't realize they're, they're not uh, lily white. Uh, why, would this ha why would the Pentagon be involved uh, about warning this? And then I come across this story all in the same time. The Pentagon to assemble nuclear rocket in orbit at 20 in, by 2020. Now this rocket, we find out, this rocket is to do, it, it's a perpetual orbit since it's nuclear. It's supposed to do uh, surveillance. Now, it makes perfect sense why India, which is on the outs with the United States, would be a threat. And why NASA would just say, hey, you're not supposed to make debris. But the problem is that they are now threatened by some other country that has an alternative decision that might be able to take out a satellite. And one project of which is a nuclear rocket, which is going to be a platform, a building platform by DARPA, for doing all kinds of stuff. What's interesting is they also say that they can use a lesser concentrated fuel. There's kind of interesting story of interesting information. All this, but but they're going to be making a, a, a satellites, and we kind of knew this before. This is not unusual. The point is, why would the why would a nation why would a nation complain that another nation took out a satellite? Nations are doing this seemingly more and more often as they show the world they have the capacity uh, to take out somebody's satellite, another nation's satellite system, which seems to be certainly now a big problem when all your systems are relayed through satellite communications. DARPA is sitting there with a program to put a satellite up there that's going to be a major, major problem. And so that became an interesting thing that, okay, you put all this investment into this, into this satellite that's going to be doing all kinds of things in it through military again. Remember, you're controlled by the military. I haven't mentioned that too much today, but if you look, at there's a thread about all that under, underpinning all of this. 
wasn't as important to say, but I'll say it right there, uh, that uh, we now then see also being a satellite that India could possibly take out being a DARPA program, that DARPA proposes creating an AI that can monitor the whole world for threats. Again, these stories come in bits and pieces. Those are like shotgun notice to you. You just got to put them together. An AI capable of monitoring the whole world and for threats of any kind is a huge undertaking. It could, could become the world's first global intelligence platform, folks, you think. But um, here's the problem. What did they say? What was the problem in this whole thing? The, uh, the DARPA proposing creating an AI. What did I say? AI is not a decision maker. AI is this program, this algorithm, and really AI is pattern recognition. Now, Pentagon don't like that they're going to be a DARPA, DARPA project that's going to stick AI on the top of this intelligence platform in space that India might be able to take out if it would choose to, and if it was to threaten anybody that I India or anybody India likes. It doesn't matter that the United States has a pretty much domination of all this stuff. But they now tie together that project in space with an intelligence platform by saying AI. And I told you to be careful, this AI is not such a good deal. AI is not what it purports to be. It's simply a math formula set up by someone that is full of errors. Full of errors. So how they want to promote how they're going to tell you but they can, essentially, they're looking at the global platform to monitor the whole world because of what? Well, it's their own war on war of terror against you. But now they're threatened by the fact that another nation, listen, Russia and China can do this, so India is just another one. Why would they point that out anyway? But it starts to make sense when you start seeing how the infrastructure is being built. The problem for us is they keep talking about this artificial intelligence. But artificial intelligence is proven to be full of errors. And it can't do the things that it's told to us to do, and they're applying it everywhere. As I told you, it's going to be, it's a condition where AI is becoming, it's like building these journalists up and put them on a pedestal. The AI is now being put on a pedestal. And we've heard the condition where the AI now becomes an authority, authorita. We found and heard in, in the New York case 100,000 parking tickets were under, um, were dismissed because they weren't pursuant to the law. We see the AI can do those things. That's apparently applicable to pattern recognition, recognition, but actually doing monitoring for threats in the world, you know, it's really a failed condition to start with, and yet they continue to do it. The I've heard, too, the... the they're going to apply, remember last week we talked about a nation is going to apply AI to small claims cases. And I said, yeah, but don't look at, they don't, uh, don't apply it to traffic or parking tickets. New York found out that the AI was, the, a math program is enough to find failure in legal against parking tickets. They think they can take AI to go against their common law cases in that country under small claims. But it's not capable of doing more than that they're finding. And the other problem with it is we start to look at how intelligent uh, is the legal, the legal system if an AI can actually do a better job and create better justice? How smart are, do you have to actually be to be a bar member? That they're running your life should just terrify you. That a simple algorithm that can't really do much of anything, it's admitted so, this AI stuff, can, can do legal why aren't you doing your own legal folks? What's the problem here? How, how intelligent do you not have to be to be a lawyer for as elite as they claim to be? Now, when I tell you you bring the law, they're not even, it blindsides these people. They don't know how to do it, so they become quiet because they're an occupier. But how really true, did you ever think about the 100,000 tickets were made justice? They invalidated 100,000 parking tickets in New York. How in an algorithm that all it can do is do a program. How smart do you actually have to be to be a judge? And when you're not that smart, what kind of justice do you think you're getting out of that? has to be a mind-controlled programming. And we look at authorita, and we look at the costumes, and we give it power. When are we going to stop this? 
AI is claiming to be an intelligence platform that's going to be over the over the world. That's going to be on satellites. I mean, you know, what is this a movie or is it Skynet or something like that? I don't know. I mean, it's it's happening here, but they're handing an expert over to something that um, is more is more intelligent than an attorney or a judge. And a cop. Remember, the cops are you're too smart to be a cop. That's almost, I forgot to say that, but that's almost a, a, a given, right? I mean, you're too, you're too smart to be a cop and too psychologically stable that you write 100,000 parking tickets that are against the law. And no one caught that until the AI program was put up against it. And that shows you how unintelligent attorneys are, actually. How much they're scamming everybody. And those are the ones that are making your laws that we talked about earlier leading into this thing. They want to focus on the corporations. Well, remember, the Bar Association is a corporation, too. And they're not smarter than an algorithm to do justice. And algorithms are not smart enough to do anything, actually. Again, they're great at pattern recognition. But do you fit into a pattern? Each one of you unique individuals? Do you fit into a pattern? Does all your action fit into a pattern? Absolutely not. But see, these model acts force everything into patterns. The transparent model acts are the worst ones because you don't even see they're acting. And this is like the bills that pop up these are, that are in the obscure places that no one understands their life is actually controlled by. And one day you just say, well, how did, when did that become a law? And you get things like state passes bill to seize gun based on entirely unchallenged accusation with no due process. Well, folks, to me, that's just the, where are you all? If it does all that, don't talk about it. Take that, wrote it, write it down, and go make a challenge to enjoin it. It's a lawless law. It's come through an, a lawless condition. This one probably wasn't need to be a model act. It just came back as an act to do, uh, to do this uh, seizure of guns. What, the red flag type stuff, what I was saying before? Unchallenged accusations with no due process. That should be a failure on its face. Where are you all? Those of you are interested in the Second Amendment, you go. To, I just read the article. It's interesting how the articles will give you a list, short list of things you could state in short statements, like the requirement of a complaint. And you do that in equity that you could at least get at least into the game to see how this thing works and how to stop this stuff that won't stop as long as you remain crickets. You're talking about great. great Great amount of legislation. Yeah, thousands and thousands of bills that come through. It's all a lot of it's special interest. Even the ones I'm talking about are special interest, but they're transparent and they're after your way of life. And that's why they're worth. They're not just little bits and pieces here and there. A model legislation on some model legislation is very important. It's in important areas of, and things. But what they're doing here with, with this is not. It's a shotgun approach to effect, effectively take away and change your way of life on plausible reasons, but that are not lawful. And they're talking about the number of bills. Yeah, there's just an onslaught. So if you're not out there to be involved to stop it or be interfere with it, and more of you, and, then it and do the right pressure, it, just, it takes more than that. Uh, it, this thing is going to go completely worse and fast. In just six months after the shooting of Parkland, Parkland the president's statement, the Giffords Law Center, see, the Giffords Law Center to Prevent Gun Violence, recorded a whopping 55 new gun control measures in 26 states. Now, why do you have two in two states? Well, I know there's a state's got three or four of them. See, they don't, they just keep shoving them in. And there's no one there to put any sense to a lot of this. Like, there's, we're still working on trying to get the back door to sound money in one of the states, but getting some senator to put, put a bill in uh, that, uh, that would offset the alternative, as an alternative, the lawless one that's going in uh, from the House side. Where, where is anybody to help do that? I don't know. I don't hear many people. So they pass these laws. They just shoot them through. All these facial violations, and no one says anything, but everyone complains about them. Maybe one one guy steps up to do it, and then as you see the California case that came down, that only that doesn't. It looks like they're going to constrain that to just a few people. I don't know how that is when they made, they actually did the equity statement of those similarly situated. But that's how it's already being confined by a, by someone who's who's not as smart as an AI, an AI program to show that parking tickets written by cops are wrong to the tune of a hundred thousand in one year. And they're going to apply AI to the legal system. Maybe a good thing because we're finding out that the judges and the attorneys aren't so smart, are they? Well, no, they're probably smart because that's the sustainable development. They're not very intelligent and they don't do justice. Just us, 
just cause. State bill sees, bill to seize guns based on entire unchallenged accusations. This is the red flag bill. This, there's bunches of states that are doing this and no one's stepping up. No, you hand it over. You hand your obligation over to somebody like the NRA who agrees with it. And only do, when it comes to those vile, those vile uh, uh, condition against that will they even step up. AI jumping in and information, they need data, data, data. This whole thing needs data. There's another thing, if you don't understand what's going on, it's you're seeing sustainable development and the fact that they need data. This technocracy sits there that they need to continually control you to monitor what's going on in order to then do the legislation which turns the ship of state into the waters that they need away from uh, the peace, wa the waters of peace and calm. They keep it under, con under war and they keep it uh, underneath bureaucratic decision and there's there's nothing but chaos in them. It seems that they'll say there's order, but it's not. We have a family, well, the delusion and futurism of liberal world order our, our academics. Uh, this article was written by Brandon Smith. I appreciate Brandon Smith. I don't know him. I don't talk to him. don't know anything about him. I, I appreciate his views on some of these things. Uh, in looking at a lot of this, but I wanted to point out something. I want I wanted you to, the delusion of futurism of liberal world order academics. Remember I talked about the university system. Remember uh, that we got this whole thing going on. This article goes through and he talks about a lot of this and he's, he pulls out a lot of good things that I think you, you kind of need to see and a way to go looking at it. The, 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 my, my problem with this, it really is an insightful uh, an insightful article for those that have never been privy to these things that you might you might hear me talk about. Again, I'm I'm concerned relative to being focused on something that it's not really the whole thing, or that you miss that it's already happening, that you already have an imperative duty now to to fulfill. It's not something of circumspection and looking at it and knowing that you're seeing the truth and that that's what you're seeing. To, we're beyond all that, so, no, so I say I did this on a Twitter. See, again, it's all written in stone now. It's all it's all blockchained. That's what they're going to be. This will be blockchain social credit too. At any rate, this I wrote it down so it's like an eternal, more, more memorialized, good or bad. Uh, respect to Brandon Smith insightful article, but creation of the cogs. He talks about being cogs of the wheel that are turning uh, in this condition. I say COGs. Remember, they got Council of Governments. It's interesting he uses the word cogs relative to a gear, but these are cogs relative to gov governmental influencers and the legal entities in the system. The creation of the cogs, these Council of Governments, and other tools are transparently but tra tan tangibly ongoing because people would rather talk about the effects of local incremental destruction and take responsibility to stop the cause, their consent, however fabricated was an insight that I don't think uh, Brandon has. I, I, again, I wish these people that are really in, really insightful had this next step in them to understand there's physical things going on. It's not a philosophical view. We can move and translate the very apparent view that you see or grasp or feel in the, in the condition that he identifies. It's not just an idea. It's a physical thing going on that needs to be addressed. And I found it interesting the correlation he uses the cogs of a wheel, but there are cogs local to council of governments that are destroying your life. And they, they go through the funding streams as well. These corollaries, again, when you talk on the truth, it's easier to make the transition to the physical. And so that's why I don't want to disrespect Brandon's view, but it, it, it's, he focuses on, on the philosophical, if you will, and there's more to this, but I don't have much time to discuss it all, but focuses on what it's more like a philosophical thing that he's observing instead of an actuality that tangibly affecting you in the world transparently. You're feeling the effect and you talk about it, you complain about it, but you don't translate that to a physical, tangible condition. And I want to keep focusing people to do that because, again, until we, we get into the fact of that fact, that there is an Incremental destruction by a transparent means, but it's there, and it's identifiable once you jump in to see it, we will never be able to address all these nonsenses that come upon us. This incremental you know, challenges to what we think are constitutional rights, these people are coming without law, 
They don't care about your constitutional rights, and there's none regarded. And that's how you get them. When you see an article, someone writing an article, said this is unconstitutional, this is that, this is the other, go ahead and start making the short list on what all that violation is. That's the cause for bringing it forward. Don't just complain about it. For this other issue, the delusion, uh, talking about, you know, sort of quite a bit here, the delusion of futurism of liberal word order academics. You know, it's more like we're utilizing some, I don't know, I think they're kind of trite, like, coming up with terms, turn of a phrase, it, it diminishes what we really have to do. It, it, it's it's right in a way, but it's 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 like a mummification as well. Anyway, I, I appreciated Brandon's effort here to expose to you all in a diff, slightly different way what I what I talked to you about. But I want you to know it's not philosophical. This is not just an idea. It's just not a phrase. It's just not calling out the world liberal world order, and now you call attention to the world order. It's there, folks. It's what they, the future they want, though. It's not done. And it's not an idea or a philosoph philosophical discussion. It's cause and effect, and the cause is transparent. And you need to bore down and into them. And in, again, it's how I can tell whether or not you've researched quite enough. I don't really judge it. You don't. It's just a matter of, well, you got you got a little bit more to do before you're going to really get to it. You really have a little bit more. I'm, I'm speaking in a different place a lot of times. And it's a subtlety, I know, and I don't sometimes maybe explain it so well. But here's one of those subtleties. He's got it. He's got a lot of it. He's got a nice insight to it. He's got a nice presentation for it. But it's more of an idea that he's making an observation than, than that it is real. And it's a method methodological thing that can be dealt with, the tangibility part. And that's what we have to have to address. Otherwise, we're going to be dealt with by it. And they do it by things like more collection of information, more types of information, like in this other family tree DNA deputizes itself, starts pitching DNA matching services to law enforcement. Yeah, this law enforcement military thing is how they beat you down. The carbon tax is a punitive measure. Who do you think is coming to beat you down over it? But law enforcement. It's not law enforcement. It's police, policy, I for E, yeah, e for Y, just change it out grammatically, policy, police, the same word, enforcement, force. But it's punitive. Without what? What did you hear before in the story? Did you, did you pull this stuff together? Unchallenged accusations with no due process. Guns will be seized. Yeah, same thing. Punitive. There was no court case. You were convicted, and now you shall pay. And then they just fold, your, fold you right into those what? It's your civil rights, Title 42, USC 1981. It's really simple what they're doing here. But they're going to now, a company who you've been giving your DNA to, figures it's going to do the right thing. It's a moral thing, it says here, that it's going to give all this information and DNA to the FBI without informing its users or without any mandate or without any need. What's moral, as I asked you, I think, last week, what's moral about a company, folks? They're amoral. Maybe the people inside are there, but do they have that right to say what moral moral is it against you? Or, again, have it a self-inflicted wound? Did you do it when you didn't sit back and say, wait a minute now, this DNA evidence in the world is something that I shouldn't be given over, and maybe we need to stop it. See, withholding, withholding consent is a, a bigger thing here. But, again, these companies where there's a buck to make, where there's a, now a moral cause, and in this case, they're actually going out to try and get money <laughs> to have this work out. In fact, there's a couple of stories. They try to get you to help pay for this thing against you and everybody else. And remember, AI is there to do character matching. AI is starting to become that authorita. It's going to be relied upon. It's going to be the go-to. And it was only supposed to augment, and we find out, I told you early on in the IBM test, it wasn't eventually, the or the debate, it wasn't augmenting at all. It actually was doing this this um, little thing I see done in the chats. I dig to try and become, uh, take an upper hand by, by term and whatever. Really kind of, a, I don't even know, that again, I don't have the adjectives anymore. I just don't want to deal with it. Uh, I'm going to give you an ego bit. I'm going to come up, turn a phrase. I come up on top of you. I'm going to show you how smart I is. Don't even understand what the, what the comment was. Don't understand the awareness that was behind the comment. Don't understand that maybe it was even a joke. This is the thing about not communicating with verbs, uh, with verbal, oral uh, communication. It's hard for the chat to see. People come in and say, oh, I'm the one that has the decision-making power by fiat, I suppose. 
Because this is like this artificial intelligence that comes out in the world and we accept it. Gover the AI that decided it's supposed to be an augment that becomes the thing. The companies that claim to have a moral compass that are amoral always and under legal, which is at least amoral, if not immoral, when you look at the violation to law that it does, and law being your life, your law, your, your property, you. Who put these people in charge is you when you didn't say no. Google's best AI just flunked a high school math test. If you think that DARPA and AI in a nuclear-powered satellite looking for intelligence on the Earth, <laughs> will it find any intelligence on the Earth? I don't think so. So it's failed before it got started, but uh, Google's best AI just flunked a high school math test. Why? Because it's only good in pattern recognition. It's not good in looking at characters on a page and coming up with the logic and the processes in order to work out a math problem. Think that one through and tell me how good your AI is in the future. I told you this stuff doesn't think like you think. It does. It's not conscience. It's not conscious. It's none of that. Itself is an algorithm, a math program, and it flunks math should tell you everything you need. Global's best AI just flunked a high school math test, and they're going to stick that into a satellite to do intelligence. They're going to stick that into databases to make decisions. They're going to stick that into your law as the expert. Folks, to me, these are just lists of short line items to be able to display to anybody that that's wanting that you anybody that takes up the cause to interfere with all of this intrusion. I don't care if you go to the what is it the national security. I told you that's a pretense. You can attack that. In fact, I'm going through my mind is going through tons. In fact, I think the idea is coming up here to do that. Any one of you could engage all this and really bring to the fore in a real intelligent addressment and then understand the understand the criminality that you're facing, but push through anyway to expose the criminality as well. Google's best AI. Your best AI just flunked a high school math test, folks. This is not intelligence. This is not an expert. This is a failed condition. Will it get better? Yeah, you can do all kinds of magic tricks. I told you a long time ago, and this is the thing I see with the bots in some of the chat rooms. Some are kind of uh, vile as well. I'm not so appreciative of some of them. But I learned a long time ago, this is a long time ago, this is when we had teletypes for monitors, folks, that you can write programs that can anticipate an, um, a reaction. And if you think very carefully and, and, and look at people's dynamics and conversation, you can write an AI program that met in many steps down the path sounds just like someone talking to you. It was, I wrote programs at, at that time that was, I got a, it just, um, it was fun to watch people interact with a program. It was these bots. It was just a, a, a an answering system that you built in. And you all you had to do, was the trick was, can you anticipate someone's response and then provide an answer to a generalized response that you think that they're going to do with another generalized response that would fit the generality is essentially what you're doing. I was amazed at how good you, that could happen. And this is all done in a couple of semesters in high school. We were in a pilot program. Will computers work in schools? Well, that was didn't know I was part of the program of the downfall, but who knows? It was something new. It was cool. Yeah, what did we do? I told you this. What did we do? We got in the system. We went and hacked the system, the, the database, right? That was the first thing we, we figured to do because it was just something to do. Were we intending to do harm? No, we didn't even know what we were dealing with. We just learned how to do some basic programming and it starts to build from there. Oh, where does this where does this address go? Oh, where does this pal? Oh, this came from a file. That's, where did that file come from? You just start doing this. Pretty soon you're getting the administrator of the system saying, hey, you can't go in there. Don't go into that database. And then they tell us, they explain to us what we were doing. And, wow, we didn't know that. I wouldn't have done that if, you know, I wouldn't have looked like I was going there because of what you're right. We wouldn't have, uh, we would have had some respect for what, what we were dealing with. But point was, I wrote programs on, it was a, um, it was response programs just to play with the technology. That was what we used to call the, the a bot, if you will. I don't see any of that knowledge in, in the in the ones I'm seeing right now. But this is how how it's so sophisticated. People who do focus on how to do that can make things that it looks like reality. But now we see the test. Google and a but and even DeepMind failed. They fail the math, and they're a math program themselves. Figure out that conundrum, folks, and you'll figure out the world that they, the new, the world we want to be bringing into, the world the one the technocrats are bringing into, is a failed paradigm. And if you don't stop it, it's a failed paradigm you will experience. And here we get to the title, Persistence of Pervasive Threat. This is coming through law enforcement, remember. 
They're using this failed system that can't do a math program that we all think that because we're promoted that it is all this stuff. Oh, smart. Well, it's smart because it's part of the technocrat. It's not intelligent. It's not in cognition. But law enforcement's going to use it. And here we have this story. Again, trip, trips me into a different thought because of my experience, not because of my opinion. And we, other people have seen this or feel this, but I say experience because I can prove this problem here. Why I tell you it's not the war uh, on, on terror, it's the war of terror. There's a proof for that, not just an opinion line. But FBI director says white supremacy is a persistent, pervasive threat to the U.S. Okay, so they haul out, this is the law enforcement that's going to be focusing its club on people. And this is the same thing about sovereign citizen and all this other uh, vilification of, of people that are trying to do something because then they're stepping up because they see injustice. And they didn't quite, they didn't quite think clearly before they acted. They kind of acted out before they really ought to because they didn't understand they're in a military consequence. And that thing don't pay attention to what you don't know. It just pays attention that you're a threat. And this little story here, the FBI Christopher Wray said Thursday, the white supremacists present a persistent, pervasive threat to the United States. Yeah, to the corporate government, to the, the government that's promoting war on you. Let me uh, just remind you, the FBI is a persistent and pervasive threat because of that. I have proof. When we went to make complaints about the lawlessness in the uh, in the in a couple of agencies well, the department of uh, excuse me department of interior and the united states department of agriculture forest service we made our complaints pursuant to law and we gave our notices all of it next thing our chairman is looking at through the mining again the mining district can do this our mining district chairman is now faced with an attack against him by the fbi agents they were of no intention to bring accountability to the to the to the government of the country. That's governance, folks. It's also organized crime. Now you all say, yeah, yeah, it's organized crime. Government's organized. No, but government's not. I mean, a mining district's not organized crime. It's actually kind of a cloistered thing, actually. But it doesn't go out and make war. It doesn't go out and bring taxes. It doesn't charge. You know, I guess it charged fees when it could, when it needed to for filings and this and that. But that's that's about the extent. But the, I wanted to point out here the pervasive and persistent threat to the United States is the is their agents' threat against you. Remember that murder memo said that you are an enemy combatant at all points, at all times, and anywhere, worldwide. The same agency that will make up terms to vilify people. And I'm not saying that I agree with so-called. Uh, what they've de deemed to be is, well, the patriot sovereign citizen. Sovereign citizens is that actually more in? I don't think anybody was explained, said that until I pointed that out 10 years ago. And now I hear it's a thing. That's cool. But there's more to it than all that. Now they're using it as a weapon. And then, then they vilify you and then they throw you under the bus with it. But that, that's the threat against you. They are the threat. The threat against the United States is trying to bring it to account. And anybody that tries to do that is an enemy combatant at the highest level. And so this is not a game. But when they come out and they try and tell us who the persistent, pervasive threat, that's a propaganda. When the FBI is saying that, I say that's a fraud, and they are trying to point the finger at someone else. Remember, there's always three pointing back at some level, and they got the three point back at them. I know that, folks. I know that. It's not an opinion. We attempted to do but accountability in the government, federal government that was harming people, the FBI had would have nothing to do with that. Threatened us. Threatened our chairman. But see, we had the law behind us, so they didn't. They couldn't go any further. They would be. They knew they were dealing with some people that would eventually. You know, you're going to take your hit. But they would. We wouldn't become a any a group or a, a, even the chairman wouldn't become someone that's in jail, uh, federal jail, in prison forever, because they knew we had the authority. In fact, we were telling them of authorities they were at least uh, claiming they didn't understand. You're right to make a complaint in the state, actually make an arrest as well. See, we were telling them we were going to get serious. And they came and attacked us. So the white supremacists, I look at the guy's picture. He's a white guy, I guess. He seems to be on his face a persistent and pervasive threat to the United States. He should arrest himself. White supremacy. They say they're exceptional there in the United States, don't they, the government? 
Why don't we start using that information? Why don't we start to turn this whole point around? I don't mean like some some uh, jack jawed stuff, like oh look how smart I am to say so. No, no, put it on paper, get it down, look very intently on what the condition is, and start addressing them on their own terms, by their own terms. But put them in more proper context. So again, the United States government redefined terrorism. You can bring the one that's de jure. It's the one the people view. It's the one that says that government that rules by fear, by terror, is is a terrorist, is a terrorism. And so you now you have your de jure definition against their made-up ones, which you then present as a color of authority definition to cover their criminal organization. It's a much better authority to bring than anything I've ever heard other people bring up thinking that they know more about the Constitution and your rights. You have none, folks. That's why you're there. Remember that. You're just addressing criminals. And, again, I mean, like in this notice that we brought, we said you uh, uh, relative to our injunction in 2013, the, the two people that are sitting in the, the highest uh, offices in the government, uh, in the uh, House and the Senate, had committed treason by their default. We don't say that lightly, and I don't say that just to say you're committing treason. I said you admitted to committing treason. That was the complaint against you, and you failed by your default to, to work to fix that. I don't work on my opinion, folks. I've learned, in fact, I learned that in the middle 90s when I saw lots of people getting beat down. I took a little different look at all this. I don't agree with really a lot of any of what I see coming out of government, but it's, there's a certain way that we have to approach it. And it's so far that I know and the focus that we've put on it, we've been making the right decisions, even to the point of being confronted by the gorilla, the FBI, that will call everybody a white supremacist, not look at themselves as the persistent threat, because they are, and you are the threat against that, and they will not, uh, that's all done to lie to you to keep the, the perception of authority and focus your attention on somebody else. They're the ones that call themselves exceptional. They're the white supremacists. I don't care what color their people are in, inside. They think them, themselves lily white. They have the sovereignty. No one thinks to say, but you also had obligations and duties that you've derelict in. Like, like maybe the pretense that it's a war on terror, when in fact you're derelict in protecting the, the homeland that you so so worried about protecting? You failed that in, 1990, in uh, 2001. Well, what do you have to say now that's not a pretense or pretext to cover that violation to all the people that you're calling everybody an enemy combatant underneath that excuse? That you brought in all this legislation till it's come to 2010 that some attorney, not so, that an AI program is better than, smarter than, that says, oh, no, we can get rid of the government, we can get rid of the judiciary, we can get rid of the international law, we can get a Libra code, then we can institute that everyone's a criminal against us and now block everybody down. No, you're not free to travel the, travel the country. And I heard crickets, I still hear crickets, and no one starts to pull what I'm saying together to help out. I can only get in so many places, get to so many places, folks. TSA plans to put new lying signs in airports. Now, I didn't really read this story. I didn't go through and read it. Some of this stuff, I okay, fine. But I saw Real ID, and I've talked to you about Real ID. When I saw this statement, ID requirements are changing. I'm looking at a, at a poster, apparently. But does your ID have a star? And they're going to get you fixed on the star. Well, that's military, isn't it? Five-pointed star, that's military. Beginning October 1st, 2020, you will need a Real ID compliant license or other acceptable form of ID Wow, folks, listen to the power you have here to really open up the brick, the, the limp it off its rock. Other acceptable form of ID, such as a valid passport or U.S. military ID, to fly within the U.S. If you didn't think you were an open-air prison coming to a travel agent near you, check with your state's driver's license agency to verify that your state-issued ID is compliant. Learn about flying with real ID at tsa.gov forward slash real hyphen ID. Did any of you get excited there, folks, at all? Those of you that claim to be right, constitutionalist, those that, have, that you have a right to travel, that you have a right at all, that there's something that the government's limited to, uh, that, that the government's just a thug, 
Did anything there excite you of the opportunities to really open this thing wide, slice them deep, or make the exposure of how they're completely criminal? I'll go through a couple of things here. It won't be the whole stuff. I don't have the time. There's also, I mean, my mind just goes wild looking at this stuff. They said driver's license. What have I talked to you before on what a driver's license is? It's a permission to do an illegal act on the highway, which is to be employed by an employer who's violating the law by using the highways for commerce. And because of that, we'll give limited liability to give these licensees, give these licensees permission to do that as long as they can stay constrained, essentially not to cause damage and harm and mayhem. And because of that potential, we're also going to incorporate financial uh, responsibility. But you need an application to come in here on that purpose, and you're going to give us permission to rule over you. And you go to your state's driver's license agency, and they say if your ID is compliant, we're not talking about driver's licenses, are we? We're talking about IDs, but they come out of the same commercial authority. What if you're not a commercial entity? What if you're not committing a crime? What if your travel is by right by the grants of Congress and the interaction of the law that says that you can't stop me from any intersecting uh, transportation, uh, excuse me, travel mode? What if your list saying what the acceptable forms of ID are failure in the law? What if I'm not required to get ID and to make an ID underneath the provision of a commercial nexus would be a fraud in the application? How do you have the right to make me, force me to commit a fraud, force me to make an, ac an accusation, that, uh, a declaration that I am not doing, and I don't have, and I have another right? How are you able to put this imposition on me and those similarly situated? They refer a state law from a federal authority. What have I told you about how this works? If you looked inside your state road laws, it says, but I have the right to use the road. It's unencumbered by your commercial permission. Not the right to drive. The right to use the highway without restriction within the lawful use, which is just traveling down the road to get to your from place to place. Do you hear at all that they have so many, there's three or four different conditions here that are you're supposed to check with your local authority. No, they don't want you to deal with them directly. You're, they're going to focus you on another place that's not somewhere where you can go. Do you even know that? The first question is, this notice doesn't give me the actual truth of who to contact. Why didn't you give me the rule that, that, that tells me to contact you when I had a problem with going to the state? Because it can't give me an ID unless I commit fraud. Now, what's your authority, first of all, and under the pretense of a real ID that's really the pretense of a war on against me? How do you justify that, let alone impose upon me the requirement to go talk to a foreign entity, the state, in order to get, get to me to do something that I already have the right to do? Where was the least meaningful imposition handled in that? And if we want to make it in constraints and we want to hand you a jur jurisdiction, uh, what how come you're only limiting the acceptable form to the forms of commerce and not to extending it to those of us that have the right? Am I making any sense to anybody here, folks, to develop a, a way to get at this? And you go, I said go administratively. What if you said that, wait a minute, now I have a right that the agency doesn't have a right to interfere with. I don't have to go administratively. Can you enjoin this against you, showing that you have the right and that they never considered that and they were required to? I think you could if you just would. Thank you for listening today. I hope something I said will inspire you to move forward and get something done to help stop this onslaught and invasion. Grimner, thank you for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. Again, thank you for all the likes that I don't get. Thanks for the like. Oh, and anybody who's doing no likes, you got to put a comment so I understand what your position is. I don't mind that at all, but you're not doing it. You're just kind of looking like a joke to me and anybody else who looks in because they listen to the information and they realize that there's no thumbs down to be putting. But that's okay. You can have that opinion. I'd like to know why, though. And thank you for anybody else that's rebroadcasting or re-promote posting the broadcast at all. And I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs are nature willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose.
Well, that's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. 